Metcalf always dangerous. He'll play as a slot guy. He'll play in the backfield from time to time. And this is the problem that Atlanta poses this Jacksonville defense with their run and shoot. From the 29, first down and 10 yards to go for Abair. Hands off to one. Yard rusher Jamal Anderson, and he picks up two. Eddie Robinson makes the stop. Well, the defense of Jacksonville, 16th in the NFL. Simmons, Yurkovich, Davey, and Lagerman, all veterans on that line. Robinson and Hardy will be the two linebackers because of the run and shoot offense. And then five people in the secondary Washington, Hudson, Dana Hall, the former 49er, Beasley, and Robert Massey. Kev, on the first play of the game, they came out in a pro offense. The run and shoot wasn't there. They're lined up Mitch Lyons at tight end, and they're doing it again this play. Second down and eight. Handoff again to Anderson, who leads by traffic. Works his way out near the 33, picking up three yards. Robert Massey makes the stop, and that'll set up third down. You know, we talked to June Jones, and he told us, hey, we're going to run the ball, but June says that every week. And you tend not to believe him because it's the run and shoot. But they came out right there. That's Mitch Lyons at tight end. I mean, this is the first he's played all year. They usually have him, and they have Harper LaBelle, another tight end. He's on the roster as a deep snapper. So a different look. is probably pretty good in the season finale. Six defensive backs, third down and six for the Falcons. A bear to the air and flush from the pocket, whacked as he throws, incomplete in his face. Eddie Robinson, number 50. That's the spy guy. That's one of the things you want to do when you play the running shoot, is you have a guy in there going to spy. Just keep and wait and wait and watch where Abair is going to be. And if he flushes out of the pocket, there's Robinson. Now watch what he does. He doesn't drop. He's just he's just mirroring A bear. And when he finds an opening, he shoots the hole. Good Rob defensive strategy. Robinson was a pickup from the Houston Oilers, and Dan Straczynski set the punt for the Atlanta Falcons, and deep back they got Chris Hudson, good-looking kid from Colorado. No rush put on, the punt is high. Hudson and the ball, both out of bounds, near the 23-yard line. That's a punt of 45 yards by the former Buccaneer. No flags in Jacksonville. We'll get the ball first down and 10 yards to go, and Mark Brunel, the only 4,000-yard passer, in the NFL leads the league in completions as well 19 touchdowns and 20 interceptions came in a trade from the Green Bay Packers on the line Baselli Coleman Wydell Tilski with an injury and Searcy Baselli and Searcy are all pros means and Maston in the backfield McCardell and Smith the receivers and Derek Brown the former Giant is the tight end and from the 23 yard line first down and 10 yards to go and Brunel goes right to work and throws in the pass pack. Jimmy Smith has a first down. Pick up a 14 on first down. He leads the AFC in receiving yards. And Brunel going right at that 43 defense of the Falcons. Matthews, Owens, Hall, and Archambault on the defensive line. George Tuggle and rookie Craig Sauer, the linebackers today. And in the secondary, the quarterback has really been a problem. Walker along with McGill. In the middle of the hard hitting safety, Edwards and Devin Bush. First down out to the 37 yard line for Jacksonville with no score in the first handoff today to Natron Means. And he plows his way for about five, setting up second down and five and a tackle by Jesse Tucker. It's Kevin, you know, it's no secret when you look at these two teams, and you know Jacksonville has all the firepower. They have the number two ranked offense in the NFL, and then you're playing against the worst defense in the NFL in the Falcons. And to a man, they're outmatched. But today, in order to keep up with the Falcons' offense, they've got to sustain drives. They, being the Jaguars, have to sustain drives, chew up the clock, and score at the end of those drives. So that means a lot of means. They just carried the ball. Now with an empty backfield, second down and four for Brunel. Runs out of the pocket, throws a pass. Another catch made. Willie Jackson downfield into Atlanta territory. A pickup of 13 yards. And he's down to the 44-yard line. So a 14-yard throw to Smith, 13-yard throw to Willie Jackson. And that's no surprise. It looks like that they're able so far in two passes to just pick them apart. And that's what you expected, you know, with their passing offense and the, the struggling secondary of the Falcons. But they're moving the ball by pass. Well, what they're going to have to concentrate on, Kev, what you said means is they've got to run the ball also. First down and 10 with a couple tight ends. Here comes Netron Means, who was picked up off waivers from San Diego, and he is stopped in the backfield. You know, I said they have to run them, and, and you saw the two times they've run them. They haven't gotten much yards. And the reason I say, 
you have to run him. You say, well, why do you have to run it, Bill? You know, why not? Why not throw all over him? They have a bad secondary. Because I don't think, Jacksonville, I don't think you want to get into a shootout with the Falcons. I don't think you would just want to keep passing the ball and passing the ball and have everybody throwing the ball all over the place. I think you have to methodically move the ball downfield, and that means means. Second down and 11 with no score. Opening drive for Jacksonville today. Brunel moves up nicely, throws again, third consecutive completion for the 27-yard line. This time the reception is made by Keenan McCardell. It's a gain of 18 yards. At the top of the show, Kev, I told you about Mark Brunel and that he has been the reason for all their success. Watch him here. He's in the pocket, and then he feels it closing around him. He steps up into the middle of the pocket. This is a guy that's very aware of everything that's going on around him. He's a smart, intelligent kid, and he just he can feel things around him, and he's able to take advantage of them. Very confident. Three of three to start the game. Three different receivers. First and ten. Handoff means run it well. Cuts outside and dives down to the 22. A gain of six yards stopped by secondary player Brad Edwards. You know, one of the things that Jacksonville did is they went in the draft, and they went out, and they got guys, offensive linemen. You know, and they got Tony Baselli last year, and he had a knee injury. But watch the job he does right here on Burroughs. I mean, he just gets his man, and he just takes him and just pushes him right out of the picture. I mean, you can't stop, play, run defense when you're getting blocked like that, and that's been a big problem for the Falcons. Seventh play of the drive, second down and four, handoff again to Means, and he's by the 20, near a first down at the 19-yard line. They'll have third and one coming up. Means, of course, Phil, takes the place of the injured James Stewart, as Tom Coughlin had to make that move in his backfield. Well, they, they brought Means in. Remember you said he got cut from San Diego, and, and, and you, then you had that big offensive line, and it's a natural fit. I mean, I played against Means when he was in San Diego. I think this guy, he's a real load. Hard to he'll, he'll bring it to you. And then you get the big offensive lineman in front of him. I mean, they have to get this running game going. For 240 pounds, Natron Means. Third down, a long one. Means gets the call the first down. He needed one. He got five, and he's inside the 15. Rookie Craig Sauer makes the stop. And, Kevin, you know, I said they drafted Buscelli. Well, on the other side... They went out and freed, so he spent a bunch of money on getting Pittsburgh's Leon Searcy. Now watch the block here. And that's Burroughs again, number 91. He just gets pushed right out of the picture, and, and they run the ball right behind him with me. That, they spent their money wisely, Jacksonville, in building this team. Rick Tackle, Searcy comes from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ninth play of the drive, another first down by Jacksonville. And off again to Means, draws his way to the 11. Picks up four on first down. Well, they got down here nicely, and then they accomplished some of the things they wanted to do. And now, as we're talking to Tom Coughlin, what he has to do is he has to get points on the board. You have a nice drive like this. Let's get points out of it. You chewed up some clock, and now, now let's, let's capitalize on it. It's important for them. This is a, this is a big game for Jacksonville, and this is a young team. Two tight ends, but Brown is split. Means with 22 yards so far. Second down from the 11-yard line. Opening drive by Jacksonville and Brunel on the draw, the pump fake, he sees the end zone and he's in for the Jacksonville touchdown. Pretty impressive drive. It's a nice drive and if you saw what got them down the field, it's Mark Brunel. And he's been the story for them all year. This kid, I mean, he was like, he's, he's hit like hitting the lottery and not buying a ticket, it really, because they stole him from Green Bay for a third and fifth round draft choice. And what he has done for this team, it, it's all Mark Brunel. Mike Hollis now will try the extra point. He has not missed a point after all season long. Brian Barker, the former Eagle and chief punter, is holding, punting now here in Jacksonville with great success. As the opening drive revolves around Brunel and Means the extra point good and just as quickly as that a 7 nothing lead so the leading passer in the NFL over 4,000 yards on the year goes on the ground and gives the Jaguars a 7 nothing lead perhaps even more impressive than pure unbridled power is the ability to harness it.
by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. opening for a smoother pour. Once a single library held the knowledge of the world. Centuries later, data was still controlled by an elite few. Then Oracle freed everyone to work with databases. Today, Oracle is putting the knowledge of the world online. It will forever change our markets and our culture. Where do you learn about companies whose future is as limitless as our hunger to know? Exactly. NASDAQ Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. By McDonald's, home of the deluxe sandwiches. They're McDonald's with a grown-up date. And by 1-800-COLLECT, the way we call Collect today. A wonderful day in Jacksonville, but not so wonderful a year for June Jones, the Atlanta coach. I'll tell you, you know, we talked about Bobby Hebert not coming back there. June may not come back either. You know, with a record like that and the running shoot and a lot of speculation. Mike Harris to kick it off for a second time. Roel Preston looks up into a glaring sun from the six-yard line. Block from Hayward, and there he goes after the 22-23 yard line. Return of 17 on the kickoff. So Brunel sets up his touchdown run through the air. 14 yards to Smith, 18 to McCardle. It's 7-0 Jacksonville. Falcons last week losing to the Rams 34-27. Left tackle Bob Whitfield gets burned by the inside and Leslie O'Neill. And Hebert is forced into a terrible throw. So on the sidelines, Aber makes no bones about his displeasure and shouting quickly. Delmas turns into some shoving. And not a good situation. I talked to Bobby before the game, too, and he really looked like he was in the tank, Kev. I mean, I think he feels like, you know, the team turned against him. He feels like... Leads the NFL in interception. Second possession today from his own 23. First and 10, got a block and throws to Emmanuel. Bert Emmanuel, the college quarterback from Rice, tackled by Aaron Beasley. That's again a 12 and a first down. Yeah, that's a screen. It's a different form of the screen. A lot of times the screen goes to the back, but they still set up the screen. They use Bert Emanuel, the outside receiver there, and they got the lineman out in front of them. And the screen's a big part of this running shoot offense. To them, it's almost like a run. Halfway through the first quarter, Jacksonville takes their opening drive. 77 yards. First down and 10 for Atlanta on the 35. And moving on that left side, they blow the play dead as flags hit the field. Bob Whitfield may have jumped. I, I, I might have been Whitfield. I think it was a tight end because they had another tight end in there. It was Mitch Lyons, 86. That's what happens when you're not used to playing all the time. You get installed into the lineup. Five snap. Full start. Number 86. The offense. Five yards. Still first down. Here's Mitch right here. It's, he's not used to playing. This is the first time he's started in probably three years. Please reset the clock. But to add a wrinkle in a game like this, obviously Atlanta trying to just throw something different at this Jaguar well, you, defense. You have to kind of wonder why, you know, you want to come out with a tight end now. You pass for all these yards, and Jamel Anderson, you run for these yards. Your offense is effective. Why do you want to change it? Leonard pushes it back five yards. First down and 15 from the Falcon 30. And the draw play, Jamal Anderson. Looked like he was stopped, and then he continues to spurt. And he's by the 40 and picks up a ton. He's out to the 41, a gain of 12. You know, I talked to Bobby before the game. I said, you know, he felt betrayed by the guys and what happened last week. And he also told me his right hand was hurting. He said he hit it on a helmet. And I was wondering, of course, you know, did you punch one of the guys? But he did, and he hit it on Roman Fortin's helmet as he was passing the ball, and it's really bothered him all week. Maybe this is why they're running. But to install the tight end, I mean, normally when they do go to tight end, they put Robbie Topek out there and then bring in Palakoa at guard. So I don't know why if they're going to run the ball, they got Mitch Lyons in there. Second and three, Anderson runs into his own blocking, keeps his footing, staggers ahead for a yard. It'll set up third and two. Kelvin Pritchett, former Detroit Lion, read it well. 
42. Well, you may, and you might get that too. <laughs> There's Lions, the tight end. And that's a big story. I don't understand it, Kev, because if I look at this matchup, you think, okay, Jacksonville has some problems in their corners. They only have three corners. So you're really taxing that secondary if you hit them with the run and shoot. You're, I think you're playing to the defensive strength when you come out there in a pro formation. We saw their defensive coordinator, Dick Duran, moments ago. Third down three. They've got to get to the 45. They bear the short drop and look for a secondary receiver and throws incomplete. Looking for the first time today to wide receiver Eric Metcalf. They're out again. Second consecutive punt for the Falcons. Straczynski will punt for a second time. And that one sailed 44 yards. And deep back is Chris Hudson. He'll have a chance to return the last one. It went out of bounds. Nice directional kicker is Straczynski. Here he goes again. And forcing Hudson back to the 12-yard line. And weaving through traffic. He's out near the 22, and Jacksonville will start right there. Nine-yard return after the 46-yard punt. 5-24 remaining in the first. Jaguars by a touchdown. With Bill Moss, Kevin Harlan, we're in Jacksonville where the Jaguars need a win today and either a loss by Indianapolis or the Bills and Chiefs game not ending in a tie. So in effect, the Jacksonville win. And they're in, of course, Bill. They've been helped by Buffalo and Kansas City flopping the last three weeks. Well, you can get all the help you want, but if you don't win, you don't help yourselves. And this team's gone on a four-game win streak. And Jimmy Smith and Natron Means have really helped them down the stretch. Second possession of the day for Jacksonville. First and 10 for the 22. And once again, Brunel to the air. And he hits his wide receiver, Jimmy Smith. And that's a gain on the play of about four. Right now for McDonald's game break. Back to our Fox Television Center and James Brown. Kevin and Bill, take a look at the middle linebacker in white. Jeff Brady had some mean words about his ex-mates, the Packers. They burn him, and they're up right now. Hey, look at this. Kansas City Chiefs leading the Bills by a field goal. Kevin and Bill. I think in Kansas City has got a lot of their defense out today, Billy. Yeah, they're banged up. They've been banged up for the latter part of the season. Second down and six. Handoff to Natron Means. Okay. Gain of two. That sets up third down and about four yards to go. Jacksonville on their first drive, marching downfield 10 plays and 77 yards. Now, Tom Coughlin's done a good job with his philosophy of bringing the guys in here, Kev. I mean, you know, you can talk about winning and all, but and the draft choices they get in the free agency, but. He's done a good job of taking guys that are virtually nobodies. And he's got, I mean, Jimmy Smith was cut by Dallas. Keenan McCardle, he was cut so many times in Cleveland, it's ridiculous. And then he filled in. Dell was cut, and then Ben Coleman was cut, the lineman. I mean, I think they've done a great job of going out and finding guys who want to come in and give it all. Good work ethic that can mold with Coughlin. Jacksonville, a very solid third down team. Third and four. They chase him out of the pocket, and the pass dropped at the 40-yard line. Keenan McCardell. Drops the Brunel pass, fourth down, and the Jaguars have got a punt for the first time this afternoon. Covered by Darnell Walker. Fourth and four of the Jaguars in their own 28. Tom Coughlin, who had kind of a stodgy, more of a reserve style, but back in October, there was a tradition of bringing donuts in on Saturdays, and when he'd bring the donuts in, the team would leave the locker room. Well, since the loss to Pittsburgh, this team has grown much closer to their coach. And that donut episode on Saturdays now kind of epitomizes where the relationship stands with the team and the coach. As Eric Metcalf returns a punt by Brian Barker, punt, and that's a punt of 40 yards, returning it 10 by Metcalf. Pretty good field position when the Falcons come back. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by GMC, putting you comfortably in command. Well, the MetLife blimp is co-piloted by Snoopy, dressed as the famous World War I flying ace. Today, rather than searching the skies for the Red Baron, Snoopy is enjoying NFL football action here in Jacksonville, where the Jaguars lead 7-0 on an 11-yard touchdown run by the ever-throwing Mark Brunel. Well, kept it on the ground after a long drop. Third Atlanta possession from their own 42, first and 10, a little bit high and incomplete near midfield. Going for wide receiver Terrence Mathis, the former New York Jet coverage by Massey in the secondary. Kevin, Mitch Lyons was back in there tight end, and I, and I touched on it, and I said I don't understand it. And the reason I think they're, you know, it's hurting them is because 
if you have the four wide receivers, it's going to create a matchup with your slot receiver at some point in time on a linebacker. And you like that matchup. And you, you went out and spent this money to get Eric Metcalf and Terrence Mathis in here to play the slot receiver position. Take advantage of the matchup. Get Mitch Lyons out of there. Second down and 10 for Hebert. Metcalf on the move. Bobby Hebert, who has started one of four, completes his second pass, and it's caught by Bert Emanuel, and he's inside Jacksonville territory to the 44-yard line. That's the biggest game today, a pickup of 15 and a first down. Well, this is a screenplay. Here's Emmanuel, and now he stops and sits back. Now watch the lineman come out. Watch Zendowski. You see 72 come out on Massey? I mean, that's, that's a heck of a job. And these guards are good at getting out there and getting in front. These big bodies on the little corners. Because if you run a screen that many times, you're going to finally get good at blocking downfield. Another secondary guy added, Bucky Brooks for the Jaguars. Hayward in the backfield. Ironhead Hayward. Former Chicago Bear and New Orleans Saint. First down and 10 yards to go. A Bear at the 44-yard line of the Jaguars. And the pass batted down at the line of scrimmage right in the way. Clyde Simmons, who was discarded by Buddy Ryan in Arizona. Now a big part of the reason why this defense has had a great resurgence late in the season. Well, you're exactly right. The, the thing about this defense is they were suspect. They were suspect last year. They're suspect at the beginning of this year. Here's Simmons. Watch him get the push upfield on Whitfield and then jump up. Get his hands up right in, top in front of Bear's face. Now, I said they were suspect, but the reason they've been successful is because they've been able to find a pass rush late in the season. With Lagerman, Simmons, Brackens, these guys have done a fine job as of late. Yeah, last year they're last in sacks. This year they're eighth. The shooting crew was Bucky Brooks who got low on Craig Hayward, which is the only way to bring him down. It's a loss of four. Fine penetration by the Jaguar defense. Well, that was Bucky Brooks, and he's, he's a corner. And at one time, he was a wide receiver up in Green Bay, Kim. And he lined up. He came up there for support. He came flying up. Watch B Bucky Brooks. This is him right here. He stays there and then just shoots once he sees it's run. And he's pretty smart, too, obviously, because he knows you don't tackle Hayward up top. You can take out his legs. And get down low on him. Atlanta has not converted a third down all day. Third and 14. Late first quarter, trailing 7-0. A bear a block from Hayward gives him time. Now he moves by Simmons and throws downfield incomplete to Tyrone Brown, a little used wide receiver who's had ankle problems and coverage on the play by Mickey Washington. And Atlanta's got a punt for a third consecutive time. Well, Bobby A bear did his part. He ducked around the pocket, found himself an opening in coverage. Now there's number 80. He's right in the middle of the screen. Brown. He hasn't played much. And it looked like he was looking to take a shot instead of catching the ball. He heard the footsteps. Straczynski will punt to Chris Hudson, who's back at about his own 10. Third straight punt on three possessions for the Falcons. This is high and hanging, and it will be fair caught by Hudson at the 14-yard line. He juggled it just a bit as he felt the pressure just a little bit. 46-yard punt. And the key play of the game so far, handed in by quarterback Mark Brunel. And, and what else is new? This kid's been doing it for him since he got here. If it's not there, he can take off. What a great combination he is. He's across to me between Elway and Young. And if those two guys, if you can mix those two guys together, I think you got Brunel. And I think it's safe to say, from my standpoint, two years from now, he's going to be the best quarterback in the league. And Mark Brunel, of course, drafted by Green Bay and Mike Holmgren, a former offensive coordinator with the San Francisco 49ers. And probably no coincidence, a left-handed throwing, number eight wearing quarterback, a lot like Steve Young, as you say. He's a smart guy, too, Kev. You know, he's up in Green Bay. He learned that offense. Then he came down here and learned a whole new offense. And you see him excelling at it like he's been playing it forever. First handoff today to fullback Lachey Maston, who's only carried eight times all season. He picks up five yards on first down. Lorenzo Styles and Lewis Riddick combined on the tackle. Hey, you usually don't see them get the fullbacks involved in their playoff too much, you know. They have a kind of run-and-shoot mentality, too, with the receivers. Although they have a tight end, they run a lot of those routes. A pro offense uses its fullback a lot. They, come, they pound it, lead blocker. You don't see too much two-back sets from this team. Jacksonville wanted to hold the ball, and they are holding on to the ball here in the first quarter with a minute and a half left. Second down and five. Brunel, pocket crumbles on his heel with Dan Owens, and out of the pocket rolls for Rose Brunel, and he wisely throws it away and into the sideline. It'll be third down. 
That, that's so frustrating for a defensive lineman, Kev. I mean, all four of Atlanta's defensive linemen were in the backfield. I want you to take a look. Watch these four guys and watch them come in the backfield. They beat their blocks and they get rush on them. I remember playing against Elway. This is frustrating. Look, you're all around them. It's nothing but white shirts, but you can't get a hold of them. <laughs> but if anybody can handle it, it's Brunel. They love him when he runs, but they like it better when he stays in the pocket and has time. Now in the shotgun, third and five. Brunel, pocket crumbles again, and he's sacked for the first time today. Back at about the 12, Lester Archambault. Former Green Bay Packers shooting through and bringing down Mark Brunel, who sacked for the 48th time this season. That was some nice pressure. I mean, they brought it, and that's exactly what they're going to have to do. They run a little stun here. It's a Texas end twist. And Travis Hall comes around from his tackle position, looping to get a, to create an opening. And if they're going to want to play, if they want to stay in this game, that's what Atlanta has to do. They have to have a pass rush. Metcalf returned to 10 yards last time he got the ball. And here's Barker's punt, which sails downfield. Metcalf gets by one at the 35, and he gets a block. And there he goes, and finally brought down at the 42-yard line. Darren Stud still makes the stop. It's a punt of 52 yards by Brian Barker. The X-Files coming up tonight. Some people are calling it a miracle that could bring peace to a planet or unleash hell upon Earth. Judgment Day is here. Don't miss the X-Files tonight, 9, 8 Central, right here on the Fox Television Network. And after this game today, most of you will see the Cowboys and the Redskins in the final game at RFK in Washington. The Atlanta defense did a nice job at creating field position for their offense. Now let's see if Bobby Hebert and the troops can do something with it. As Bill said earlier, Bobby Hebert did not practice all week from their own 43. First and 10, Ironhead Hayward, a big hole, plowing up the middle and to the 41-yard line of Jacksonville. That's a pickup of 16, the longest offensive play of the day by Atlanta. <laughs> Ironhead. I mean, he, he won't go away. He, he, when this guy gets the ball, you know, I said Means was a load. This guy brings a new meaning to it. Watch the nice block right there by Fortin. He takes Yerkovic to one side, and Hayward just cuts off it. He sees it, he waits, he sees it, and he, and he takes the gap. Now, I'm not going to say this is the fastest guy in the world, but if you give him room like that and he gets rolling, he's tough one to bring down. 252 pounds. Best position today by Atlanta from the 41, first and 10. Second option, screen pass, set up and caught by Tyrone Brown. He's to the 35 of Jacksonville. And on the play, picks up six. It'll set up second down and four. I think it's important for Jacksonville. He comes out, they come out with all that emotion and all that energy. They can't lose it here in the second quarter. Jacksonville controls the first quarter. Brunella touchdown run. It's seven nothing Jaguars at the end of one. Back at Jacksonville, beginning the second quarter, 7-0 Jaguars on top. You know, Don Capers in Carolina getting all the credit up there. I think Tom Coughlin, the coach of Jacksonville, this second-year expansion franchise deserves a little credit as well. He's done a fine job. And I think one of the key turning points, Kev, is what we talked about when they got rid of Andre Risen. I mean, it, it, you pay him all that money, you're going to lose the bonus. It's going to cost against your cap. But he went out and he, and he got rid of him. I think it was a big move in installing Jimmy Smith. And this team has responded since that point. Colts and Bengals tied at seven. Kansas City by three in the second over Buffalo. Games of importance here. Jacksonville going for a wild card berth with the win, barring a tie in Buffalo. We begin the second quarter. Second down and four. Oh. Hebert with all kinds of time to throw. And here comes Wagman, and he finally dumps it off to Craig Hayward. He picks up a first down, gains nine, and finally leapt on by the rookie linebacker, Kevin Hardy. And I'll tell you one thing that Jacksonville is doing when they do get four receivers out into the mix. Now, the tight end is going to get out, too. But watch the matchup right here with Kevin Hardy. They do a great job of covering up the receivers downfield. I mean, everybody's covered. Bear's looking for somebody, but look at the coverage. Everybody's covered. And here's a safety up top for this man right here. So everybody's covered, and that's a great job by the Jaguars' defense. Atlanta began this drive on their 42 and first down and 10 yards to go. A handoff and a swarming attack knocks Hayward for a loss of a yard led by rookie Kevin Hardy. No gain on the play. Or they like Hardy. Kevin Hardy's played well for him. And he's a rookie and you come in and you play all 16 games and it gets to be a long season. 
Now they've taken their time with Tony Brackens and Aaron Beasley, the two other rookies. But Kevin's played the whole season, and overall he's done a good job. Still makes rookie mistakes, sometimes freelances a little bit, not all that discipline, needs to work on those things with a tremendous athlete. Second down, 11 from the 27. Hayward up the middle he rolls and that is using it mildly to the 21 and he gained six that'll set up third down and about five one thing Jacksonville is doing now is they're just staying in their nickel defense whether the tight ends are end is in or not now you have one two three four five six when you have six in the box and you play the run and shoot you give it to your fullback whether it's Hayward or Anderson and there's not enough bodies in there to match up with these eight guys that are coming at you offensively Atlanta began with great field position for their own 43 because their defense held Jacksonville deep in Jacksonville territory. That sets up this field position. Third down and four. A long four. Abair whacked and brought down. And it's a fumble on the play, but they blow the ball dead. Ball down, 29-yard line. Even though Aaron Beasley will get a little exercise, that ball has been marked dead. Abair was cocked to throw at the 29, and they'll try for three. Aaron Beasley with the hit and the recovery. Convert on third down. That's what you need to do in this league, and that's what Atlanta hasn't been doing a good job. Here's the slot right here. That's 21, Aaron Beasley, the nickel. Watch him blitz. Kevin Hardy comes on the outside. The fullback picks him up, and then Beasley right up in his face. I mean, that was a, that was a nice blitz by Jacksonville. Seven-time Pro Bowler Morton Anderson, the former Saint, now Falcon, will try a 46-yard field goal. He has hit 17 consecutive field goals inside 50. On the Straczynski hole, he bangs it through, and the Falcons are on the board. So their defense sets up their offense. They can't get in. Jacksonville's defense holds them to three, but the Falcons on the board, trailing 7-3. to three. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Nicotrol. When your cravings are tough, Nicotrol is tougher. By Aflac, ensuring over 40 million people worldwide. And by Energizer. Long-lasting Energizer batteries keep going, going, going. Happy holidays. Santa Claus, one of 70,000 here to watch the game under 60-degree temperatures and brilliant sunshine, a seven-play drive and a 46-yard field goal by Morton Anderson, who sets the kickoff for the Atlanta Falcons. And the boot is away, and the return is brought up field by Bucky Brooks, the former wide receiver with the Green Bay Packers, a converted... Defensive back in a 27-yard return. And Jacksonville will get it for a fourth time today. Well, happy holidays to you all. With Bill Moss, this is Kevin Harlan. We're in the second quarter. 7-3 the score. Jacksonville on top. We're going to see one of the oldest players ever to play defense in the NFL in this series. Clay Matthews, what a great career he's had. It's going to be his last game. And 19 NFL seasons and 19 Christmases gone by. And if you happen to see Clay Matthews smiling, it's because... He's the only guy in the NFL that's getting a paycheck and collecting his pension at the same time. I mean, it's a great deal he's got going. He knows Social Security, doesn't he? Jacksonville has been stopped pretty cold the last two possessions by this Atlanta defense. On their own 25, first and 10 pass. And he's on the money, caught by McCardle. Right now for McDonald's game break, back to our Fox Television Center and James Brown. All right. Newly signed Brad Johnson, Kevin showing off that million dollar arm. He goes 43 yards on this pass play to Chris Carter, all tied at seven. Chiefs up by two field goals over the Bills. Back to Kevin and Bill Box. So, Billy, already this day is unfolding not like we anticipated. We thought Green Bay would be handy against uh, the Vikings on the second one handoff. The Means, who keeps moving the pile. And picks up a couple and probably has the first down to the 36. And I don't think anyone anticipated Kansas City shutting out Buffalo through the first half. I don't half. think so. And I don't think at this point anybody anticipated the Atlanta Falcons even being in this ballgame. And they're very much in this ballgame. And they have to realize that and have to, you know, spend spell on what they're doing good and keep doing it. Means in the game. First and ten. Play fake by Brunel, being chased in the pass, bobbled and lassoed at the 39 by tight end Pete Mitchell. 
He picks up four yards after all that, setting up second down and six. He was lucky to catch that pass. Kim. Kev, one of the things, you know, I look at, and, and you see a nice pass right here, and, and the bootleg out the back door, and good concentration on the catch, but one of the things you see is you know that Jaguars are a better offense than Atlanta defense. And if you don't come into it with a methodic game plan, it could end up hurting you. Second down and six, a good block by Means. Sets up for now, going deep and incomplete. Looking for Jimmy Smith third down but they were blitzing him well the blitz was on and they got man-to-man -man coverage and I told you Brunel's a smart guy and he finds out where the man-to-man -man coverage is right off the top of your screen there's a linebacker and then he, he finds man-to-man -man coverage out there George on the blitz and then you have the man-to-man -man coverage and he just airs it out I mean that was a nice job of staying with him out there by uh, Darnell Walker and he ran with him Jimmy Smith is one of the fastest wide receivers in the NFL and Walker that time was step for step with him. Well he replaced Andre Risen as you mentioned earlier and that has changed this offense the last month. Third down and six Brunel from the gun. Rolling now has to get to the 45 and throws a first down pass to the 45 of Atlanta. Pete Mitchell makes his second catch on the drive a gain of 15. Well that's when you have a zone coverage that's where Brunel is so tough because he was covered and then Brunel steps out of the pocket when he steps out of the pocket some of the protection breaks down and it allows the receiver to run around through there now Mitchell was covered when he was on the hash marks but when he saw Brunel scramble then he darted to the sidelines and got in between coverages and there was an opening Mitchell was with Coughlin at Boston College so when they brought him down here the coach knew exactly what the tight end could do First and ten from the 45 of Atlanta for Jacksonville. Good pickup again on the blitz by Means as Brunel flushed from the pocket. And again, we're seeing great pressure applied by Atlanta's rush. Well, they, I, I told you, for them to be in this game, they have got to have a pass rush. It's the only it's the only thing. Because if you get in a shootout, Atlanta's defense isn't capable of withstanding. So what they've got to do is they've got to pressure. Again, here's George off the corner, and Means picks him up. But the pressure is there, and it forces Brunel out of the pocket. Now, when he's forced out of the pocket, here comes Owens, here comes Archambault. They're closing in on him, and that's an excellent job. And then the, Brunel has, just has to air the ball out and get rid of it. Brunel, 7 of 11, passing the ball, second down and 10 from the 45. Rushes on again, but this time he beats it with a little screen pass to the tight end, Mitchell, who makes his third catch on this drive and climbs for a first down and a pickup of 13. So Mitchell, moments ago, picks up 15. That time, 13, a first down to the Falcon 31. You know, I told you about McCardle, and I told you about Jimmy Smith. Now, Pete Mitchell is a guy that really overlooks because he's a guy that's been an intricate part of this offensive success, too. As of late, I mean, they're getting the ball to the tight end. They're finding different ways to get it to him. Not only stretching the seam, but as you saw there, they got it with a screen. Eighth play of the drive. Natron Means, big block by the running back and receiver downfield, and he's inside the 15. Grant Edwards was pushed back. And they'll mark him down at the 14 after a gain of 18 yards on the run. I want you to take a look at 76, Rich Tilski. Now, Tilski's in for an injured Brian DeMarco, but this guy's been playing some great football. Watch him pull and open this whole thing up. See how he seals that whole thing? He seals the whole inside that line, keeps everything bunched up. Nobody can get around him, and that opens it up for Means, and he's out the gate. 18-yard pickup, first and 10. Jaguars have doubled the number of first downs Atlanta has gotten. And here's a pass inside the 10-yard line caught by Derek Brown to the five. Only his 15th catch of the year. That's a gain of eight. And that, that's a gift. And they, they usually don't throw the ball to Derek Brown. Derek Brown's in there. They got him from the Giants. Remember, he was a high draft choice of the Giants. And then they, they put him up for the expansion draft, which is virtually just like getting released. And then he missed all of last year with the injury. And he's in there, and they use him in there. He's a big guy. He's like 6'6", 270, and they usually keep him in the block. They rarely throw the ball. Second down one. Means sent up the middle. That's as far as the three. Jesse Tuggle was the one filling the gap. The leading tackler for the eighth consecutive year on the Atlanta defense. Not bad for a guy who was a free agent in 1987. I mean, he just, they just brought him in there, and he's been playing great football for him. 
not always doesn't always do the right things, but he's always in the right place. Watch number 58 fill the hole. He takes on a block, finds means, and gets low, and stays with him and wraps him up. I mean, a lot of linebackers are going to come in there when you're coming off a block like that and Means is in your lap, you're going to get rolled over. Not Jesse Tuggle. Three-time Pro Bowler out of Valdosta State down in Georgia. And they're going to bring the sticks out to see how close Jacksonville is to the first down. They have moved well downfield beginning at their 25. 15-yard pass to Mitchell, a 13-yard completion to Mitchell, and an 18-yard run by Natron Means. Sets it up here. There's Tom Coughlin, long-time assistant in the NFL with the Giants, the Packers, and the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, now you're really taxed defensively when you're the Atlanta Falcons. You've had some success blitzing. You've caused Brunel problems. Now you have to account for the run down here when you're this close to the end zone, and your man-to-man -man coverage has got to be great. You don't have much room to work, so you've got to get on the jam and stay on your receiver quick if you're going to blitz down here. This saw Rod Russ, the defensive coordinator for the Falcons, as Clay Matthews digs in third down and one, two tight ends, 11th play of the drive. Means stacked up. I don't know if he got it. He was hit at the five and brought down. Well, that's going to be close, Kevin. It sure looks like he didn't get to the line of scrimmage. They're not even going to measure it. It's fourth down and about a yard. What do you do if you're Tom Coughlin? I take the field goal and be happy down here. I think if you get caught up in the emotion of things, it could cost you because Atlanta's playing some strong football right now. Boy, what a fill. Lorenzo Styles, number 59, came just flying in there, and he stopped the momentum of means. Watch 59, Lorenzo Styles. 23-yard field goal attempt by Mike Hollis on the Brian Barker hold. And the Jaguars are next their lead halfway through the second quarter. Jaguars win there in barring a tie in Buffalo a new score from Jacksonville now 10 to 3 the Jaguars. Well, we're talking about the AFC and the NFC Green Bay with the win today has home field throughout plus the first round by Carolina right now is leading Pittsburgh in Carolina. Dallas will play later today on Fox against Washington. It's really the only question that the five and the six slot between Minnesota and Philadelphia. They're going to flip flop back and forth and of course then there'll be a position there for number six if Jacksonville wins here. And if Carolina wins today they win the NFC West have a first round by and play second round football in Charlotte. Kickoff by Mike Hollis. Deep back Roel Preston from the five for the Atlanta Falcons. And Preston is out to the 27 yard line tackled by Ty Hallett. Well, today's AFLAC trivia question is, Atlanta entered the NFL 1966 as an expansion team. How many seasons did it take to make a playoff appearance? The answer's coming up. Again, our AFLAC trivia question, Atlanta entered the NFL in 66 as an expansion team. How many seasons did it take to make a playoff appearance? 13. On Christmas Eve, 1978, Atlanta beat Philadelphia 14-13. Steve Barkowski, two fourth-quarter touchdown passes as they beat the Eagles by one at Old Fulton County Stadium. On their own 27-yard line, Atlanta first down and 10 yards to go with a couple tight ends. The backfield in the eye and the handoff with the block from Hayward goes to Jamal, make it Richard Huntley. Huntley is out of bounds. Out to the 32 and a gain of about five yards. So somewhat surprised by the conservative nature of the play. Conservative? How about this? I backs. They got, they got Hayward up there as a fullback. Two backs in the backfield. And they're running the ball. 19 plays by Atlanta. Nine runs and ten passes. That is not the run and shoot, folks. Why do you think it's like this today? I'll tell you. You know what I think they're doing? I think they're baiting them. I think they're, they're baiting their defense, sucking them in, getting them used to playing the run and conventional defense, and they'll come out from the second half, put in the run and shoot, and mess them up. And as you just saw, great balance running pass today. Second down, handoff, and Huntley again, a rookie from Winston-Salem State, picks up three yards. That'll set up third down and about two with the Jacksonville Jaguars on top. Later stages of the second quarter, 10-3. to three. Huntley, I mean, he, he rarely ever gets the ball. Watch Davey, number 92. Watch him come down and jump on the back. Now, you know Hayward's a tough runner, and you know Jamel Anderson's a tough runner, but watch. Look, he's carrying. Huntley is actually carrying Don Davey up there. 
Jacksonville's defense has not allowed a third down conversion today by Atlanta. Third down and two. Hayward. Maybe a yard when he needed two. Tackle made by Kelvin Pritchett. He looks to be shy by at least a yard. He's going to be shy. Boy, that was a big hit by Kelvin Pritchard, too. Fourth down. You wonder why, you know, they, they, they've run the ball well today, although they don't get the first down here with the team mired in a 3-12 and 12 season. Why wouldn't they run the ball more? Well, I, I don't understand why they're doing it. I mean, people around the Atlanta area that have followed the Falcon teams have been calling for this two-back set for years. They've been asking for it. Now it seems either 3-12, and 12, the last game of the season, job speculation, everybody's saying June Jones is going to be gone now. He wants to show you that he has a two-back offense. Straczynski to punt. High snap, but he pulls it down. Chris Hudson back. Again, now he looks into the sun for the first time today in the second quarter. He's touched, and down he goes inside the 15-yard line. Two-yard return, 52-yard punt, 348 second quarter. Jacksonville by a touchdown. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Ford Taurus. More of what America wants in an automobile. Four straight wins for the Jaguars, and Jimmy Smith, the big reason why, Andre Risen let go, and Smith emerges. The former Dallas Cowboy reject is a star in Jacksonville. Reject the key word there. I mean, he had some troubles. He was a second-round draft choice by the Cowboys. Had a broke leg, and then he had an appendectomy, and then he cut him. This guy was out on the streets. Well, at the worst beginning field position today, Natron Means takes it into the grasp of David Brandon. A short gain of three on first down, make it second down and seven yards to go. And Smith, who leads the AFC in receiving yards and is fifth in the NFL, has blossomed with Brunel, it seems. They've gotten stronger as the season's gone on. I talked to Mark Brunel yesterday, and I asked him, I said, he's really emerged as your guy. He said, yeah, it's funny. He says, you know, we, we're clicking. And he, and he talked about he talked about Brett Favre and Sterling Sharp. He says, it's that kind of bond. I feel comfortable going to him. I know he's going to come down with it. Second down and seven pass. Shea Maston works the sideline, and he picks up the first down by the length of a football near the 25. Yeah, pretty funny. You know, we're seeing a different offense from the Falcons and a little bit of different offense from what we're used to seeing from the Jacksonville Jaguars, too. I mean, Maston has five catches on the year, and he only had seven runs coming into the game. And now that was his sixth. He gets a pass, and he gets a run, and you're seeing some different things here from Jacksonville. I'm not sure why they've changed. I think they should go back and start throwing the ball to those wide receivers. First and ten, Mean slips and is down at about the 27 on a gain of two. And you thought this field was slippery walking on it before the game. It was a slick field. You know, I noticed it watching the game last week down here when they played Seattle, and I saw everybody slipping around. And then I went out on the field today, and it, and it felt slick. And the grass isn't wet, but it's just I don't know what kind of grass it is, but it's a slick grass. And I saw the guys in warm-ups out here, and the the. Defensive backs were backpedaling and wide receivers were cutting. Those guys were falling all over the place. A little foggy here last night. A heavy dew at 60 degrees now, and that's one of the reasons why we're told it is slick on the field. Jacksonville on top, 10 to three. Second down, eight. Late first half, the throw, and it's caught by Smith, who's got the first down, working the sidelines wonderfully to the 44-yard line as he picks up 17 and beats Devin Bush on the corner. I'll tell you what. That time they had five receivers go out. You know, they, they're mixing it up well. Now, I want you to watch Jimmy Smith. Look at the distance they have. And then you, one part of the things you do is, I mean, you try to pick the safeties. You try to pick the corners. Get into position where they have to stop, and then you use what their body's doing, and you go the other way. And that time he stopped and turned it out. Smith felt he was wrong by Dallas. Felt that he didn't get the fair shot that he deserved with the Cowboys. Now he's showing it so well here in Jacksonville. It is a first down, and they blow the play, the play dead. Because of the two-minute warning. Okay, let me tell you, Dallas wishes they had Jimmy Smith there now. Especially this year. Two-minute warning, first half. On Christmas night, Dustin Hoffman and Gina Davis star in a comedy adventure about the world's most unlikely hero. Fox presents a special movie presentation of Hero Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, right here on the Fox Television Network. Where after that Christmas goose is cooked and eaten and the presents have been opened, stay up with Fox, nonstop Fox, on Christmas night. With Bill Moss, Kevin Harlan, Jacksonville, Florida. Jaguars win. They're in the playoffs. Oh, Here's shit. the first and ten handoff. And a big hole up the middle. Climbing through is Natron Means. And he's all the way to the Falcon 42. It's a pickup of 15 on the play. 
Well, Jacksonville's really mixing it up well now. You saw them run screens. You saw the five wide receiver sets. Now this is a draw. Look at the down block by Coleman to open that thing up. They caught Atlanta in a stunt, and Coleman just pushed the whole thing down. And no huddle here. Two-minute offense. Brunel on the run. Needs to get to the 32. A flag has been thrown, and Brunel slides into the 26. That's enough for a first down pending the penalty. It's a gain of 15 yards by the scrambling Mark Brunel, who scored the first touchdown for Tom Coughlin's Jaguars today on the ground on the opening drive of the game from 11 yards away. Penalty against Atlanta. And the defense really had kind of stiffened, it seemed, Bill, as this second quarter was going on. They played they played better. And that, that little deal down there when they had the possession before and they kept them to a field goal, that was a win for them. Illegal contact. Number 58 of the defense. Well, he's declined. First down. And we saw him last week, and they were horrible against the Rams. 58's Jesse Tuggle. That's in the middle. He's going to make contact here with a receiver. And it's... He gets that little shot right there. Did you see the shot he got on him? Well, that's past five yards, and it's illegal. It is a first down, 26-yard line. Jacksonville on the move. Seventh play of the drive, which began back at their 14-yard line. The worst beginning field position today. He's been audible out of the play. Calls a timeout. Play clock was down to one second. So Brunel will talk it over on the sideline with Tom Coughlin. Leading 10 to 3. How do you watch the playoffs? What a throw! What a catch! Get close to a tube, any tube, and hang on. It won't be pretty. Oh, goodness! Because if history repeats itself, and it has the last 12 years, the Super Bowl winner comes from the NFC. Breaks the tackle, the touchdown! How do you watch the playoffs? The NFL on Fox. That's how. The NFC Wild Card Playoff next Sunday on Fox. Watch the shotgun snap by center Dave Wydell. I want you to watch where the laces end up in Mark Brunell's hands. Almost perfect. Right in his left hand there, and he's left-handed quarterback, and the laces are almost lined up perfect for him. No spin on the ball. Is that typical of most centers? I'm not sure. I don't know how many centers that can. I don't know if he planned it like that. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I don't think he's that good. We'll keep track of it. Wydell, one of the bigger bodies on that offensive line, but a veteran flanked by great tackles. Now first down on the 26-yard line. Brunel, the back from the backside, and they jump on his back and bring him down. Second sack today. Lester Archambeau makes the grab. Second time Brunel has been sacked in his backfield. Covered sack. That was a covered sack. There was some great coverage downfield. Now they show blitz. See everybody up in blitz, and they come back out. So Brunel thinks it's going to be man-to-man -man first, then he sees the zone. Second and 11, handoff to Means, and he's to the 21. And he picks up about six on the carry, and a timeout taken by Jacksonville. So they burn their second timeout. One left on the board, 111 left in the first half. People love champions. You got the two best teams. They worked all year long to get to this moment. People love great events. Winning a Super Bowl is it, as a player, as a coach. The Super Bowl, the spectacle. An incredible moment. It's astounding what it's become. Super Bowl 31. It's just something about somebody being the best. Fox Super Sunday, January 26th. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern when John Madden reveals his all-time Super Bowl team. Dockers khaki halftime report coming up next. JB and Terry will bring you all the scores and highlights from around the league. Also, don't miss Fox NFL Sunday's Choice Cuts, which features the best plays of the year. Boy, they would love a Christmas present in Santa's sleigh with a playoff berth. A win today, and they've got it. Third down and five. Jacksonville quarterback Mark Brunel swings it down the middle, and it's caught by tight end Pete Mitchell. Who's had a large role in this game? He gives him first and goal to go. It's a pickup of six. One timeout remaining for Jacksonville. Okay. Brunel puts it down on the turf. 54 seconds to play as June Jones surveys his defense, which is ranked 28th in the NFL, working against the second ranked offense of Tom Coughlin. I'll tell you, June Jones talking to him yesterday, he knew about Pete Mitchell. 
and he also knew about his weaknesses defensively. And he told us, you know, most guys, most coaches want to tell him about their own players. He goes, better watch out for Pete Mitchell. That's a heck of a player. Keep an eye on him tomorrow. Second down goal from the eighth. Grinnell from the gun. And on the 11th play of the drive, he goes into the end zone where it's caught but out of bounds by Keenan McCardle. So it'll be third and goal from the eighth. I think it's important for Jacksonville to start scoring touchdowns to get into the end zone, Kev. Last time they got stopped down here about this time. Now it's third and nine still, or third and goal. And they got stopped last time and had to settle for a field goal. I think Jacksonville needs to put it in the end zone. And if they don't, as you mentioned before, another Atlanta defensive victory. Yeah, it's a small victory. They went the length of the field on them, but they're keeping them out of the end zone. Means at the side of Brunel in the shotgun, third and goal from the eight. And Brunel and out of the reach of receiver Jimmy Smith near the goal line. So indeed, Atlanta's defense holds for yeah. a second time. And, and I think the reason you want those points is because Atlanta's offense at some point in time is going to explode. They're going to get you. Last week, Kev, you saw them turn the ball over eight times, six interceptions and two fumbles, and they still scored 28 points and were in position to win the game with seconds left and time ran out on them. I don't think you want to get in that situation. Jacksonville doesn't want to get in that situation with Atlanta. Well, Hollis just kicked a 23-yard field goal. He'll now try one from 26 yards away with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Parker the hold. The kick just slides inside the upright. And Jacksonville comes up with three to lead by 10. But like you say before, Atlanta and June Jones have got to be happy. Is it, is it worse? Because two times they've been inside the 10-yard line. They're marching the ball down the field on them. They are doing that, but they're not getting into the end zone. And that's a small victory for Atlanta's defense, who has struggled terribly all year long. Coming up next, the Redskins look to avenge a Thanksgiving Day loss as they battle the Cowboys in historic RFK Stadium. It's the last game there. Dallas has already won its fifth consecutive Eastern Division title. Washington wants to leave RFK with another victory by beating the champs. It's coming up next for John and Pat right here on Fox. And who would have ever thought after a 7-1 and one start, the Redskins, Bill, would not make the playoffs? Mm. I, I, I sure did, man. They have some problems up there. And a lot of that is on their defensive side of the ball as well. But that'll be a great game for Pat to call. He kicked the first points there. Right. Ever first in the stadium. Goal, and then, exactly. then now it's going to be the last time ever played there, and he's calling the games. That must be a special moment for him. Roel Preston deep back for Mike Hollis. Wonderful day here in Jacksonville, Florida, where the city has been electric all week long, knowing that if the win today by the Jacksonville Jaguars is accomplished and captured, they will be in the playoffs. Preston from the five-yard line for Atlanta. And he turns the corner and drops to about the 25-yard line. Well, this is a team that has won four consecutive games. Speaking of the Jaguars, four straight wins. They've won five of six, and boy, when it counts, in November and December, this team has answered the bell. They've done a great job. A big turning point for this team was on the road in Baltimore at week 12. They won up there, and that really gave the team confidence, and then they went on the four-game win streak. I think they can look at that game, week 12, at Baltimore as the turning point for this team if they get to the playoffs. Six weeks ago, they're three and six, but their defense has improved. They've had fewer turnovers and fewer penalties. In fact, today, case in point, no Jacksonville penalties today. On the 25-yard line, six defensive backs facing A. Bear with the shovel pass. Caught by Hayward, gets a block from that lineman. And he is out for a first down, a pickup of 13. Clock ticks down. He's near his own 36. And now they come out in the run and shoot. Okay, now they got the four wide receivers, the one back set. I told you they were trying to bait him. Now watch Ironhead here. A Bear is going to get him on a little shovel pass. He goes up there, looks like a pass. Everybody drops back into coverage, and he flips the ball to Ironhead. And he actually hangs on to Antone Davis's shirt. Says, "Get out there and front and block somebody, will you?" Massey is down. You know, against Ooh. the run and shoot, they'll have to play the extra cornerback, and Massey will be getting more time. Jacksonville, really only three true cornerbacks. The safeties, Hall, Hudson, and Davis, will have to match up against some of these receivers as, if this transpires with the run and shoot in the second half. That's going to be key if they lose Robert Massey. That's, that's going to be a big loss for him with the run and shoot. You see Massey, he comes in there and lowers his head. 
I mean, that's what Ironhead does to you. He, he's, a, he's a weapon. He's a lethal weapon. You get Ironhead out there in the flat, and he bowls over these cornerbacks, and you're trying to come up there and stop him. If you tackle him high and you don't get this low in his legs, he can hurt you. It's only three cornerbacks, and that will be a problem for Tom Coughlin, as you see Massey, a free agent pickup this year, hobbling off the field. They were short at corners coming into the game. They only had three actual corners coming into the game. And that's that's uh, you're, you're shorthanded there when you're playing a run and shoot offense. Now, if you have Massey out, that's re really going to put a bind on the linebackers. That's when you have to leave in your linebackers and you can't take them out. And you like the matchup of the linebackers on the receivers, Metcalf and Mathis. You got to love that. So they bring in Bucky Brooks, who's already had a sack. Behind the line, and there's Dick Duran, who, by the way, was up for the Yale head coaching job and declined it and decided to stay here in the NFL in Jacksonville. Bucky Brooks in the game, replacing the injured Robert Massey. They've also brought in Ricky Bell, who is waived as Massey goes to the locker room. They also bring in Ricky Bell, waived earlier this year by Pittsburgh. He is a rookie from North Carolina State. Everybody they bring into this organization has been waived someplace before. <laughs> I mean, you got to admire the guys, though. I mean, they're a good effort group, work hard, good work ethic, and all that stuff. But they've been cut elsewhere. First and ten, Abair throws opposite side, caught by Emmanuel. The last week caught nine passes against the Rams, and he is closed in upon by Ricky Bell, who comes in and says a gain of just two yards. Well, you know, they had a little razzle dazzle stuff in that play, and you know, when when you take a corner out. And Massey just left the field. Hey, line up and go after the guys. We'll find out what they have back there. And if anything's going to test them, it's this offense. Well, they should test them. I mean, they should line up there and go find out what they have there. I mean, Ricky Bell's in the game now. Number 42, he's a rookie. You just talked about him. He was cut before. Go after the kid. I mean, you want to sit there and tell me all these stats and all these yards and the run and shoot compiles this and we got the leading quarterback and the leading yard getter and the leading rush, all this stuff. Well, let me see it. You got Ricky Bell in there, rookie. Go at him. Which they just did. Second down and eight. And Hebert with wonderful time out of the pocket and throws and just off the fingertips of receiver Tyrone Brown. That sets up third down and eight. Now, now that's one of the things that you miss with Jeff George. Well, you don't miss his uh, sportsmanship. You don't miss his friendship, but you do miss his arm strength downfield. And the run and shoot is built to stretch the field. Yeah, you have four wide receivers and one running back, but the routes really stretch the defense. They really take everything downfield. And if you don't have a quarterback with a strong arm to get it downfield, it limits you. It really limits you to things underneath. And they could have used that strong arm there. Seven defensive backs for Jacksonville. Third and eight. Atlanta has yet to convert a third down all day. And off to Hayward. Needs to get to the 48. Got a block. Has the first down. Weaving by traffic and into Jacksonville territory on a good looking run of 11. And Atlanta still alive on this drive, but five seconds remaining. They call timeout. You have third and forever. What are you going to do? Well, this is what you do. You have one, two, three defensive linemen, and everybody else is deep. You give it to the big guy. Let him take off. And watch how he uses his blocks. He knows he's no lightning burner. He just stands behind Fortin. He says, hey, you go get him. I'll cut this way. Run right. the referee over. First down. And a little hurdle at the end there. A very little hurdle. That's 250 pounds trying to get up in the air. Dockers khaki halftime on deck. JB and Terry will bring you scores from a very important day in the NFL. Green Bay, Minnesota. Buffalo, Kansas City. Carolina trying to win the division with the game today at home against Pittsburgh plus choice cuts featuring the best plays of the year all that and more on the Dockers khaki halftime report Browning Nagel has been brought in because as Bill told you earlier the quarterback a bear can't throw because he's got a bad wrist and a bad hand the Nagel who's got a rocket for an arm will throw the final play if he gets time and it's more like an a bear pass, and it's picked off as the first half comes to a close. Or they just knock it down. Looked like it was in the hands of Bucky Brooks, and he just knocked it down. That closes out the first half. A win, and Jacksonville is in. They lead at the half, 13-3. We go back with the Khakis halftime. 
they need to get back to that and score some points. Bucky Brooks is held in the end zone as we open up the second half with a kickoff to the Jaguars. And there's Mike Brunel, Mark Brunel, who has thrown for over 4,000 yards this year. And through 30 minutes of play here today, here are the numbers in the first half. His good friends call him Mike, but Mark will do for now. <laughs> Yeah, they, I'm talking into a mic. That's why I got confused. Huh? <laughs> you, you look at everything. Uh, yards rushing, passing. It's been phenomenal. But for the Jaguars, I think this is the big thing right there. Penalties. No penalty yards and, and, no, and no turnovers. And that's been the key to their success the last four or five weeks is the, the ability to control that. So the touch back to the 20-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. And Means, still on his feet, Stumbles ahead to the 22 and picks up two yards. Second down and eight will be on tap. You know, Kev, I talked about them. I think they need to open it up more and get back to what they're doing. A lot of times, you know, you look at the situation, you come in, you're playing Atlanta, and you know you can beat them. You know you're better personnel-wise. So next week, you want to mix everything up for the team you're going to play in the playoffs. Give them so many formations. Give them so many different things you haven't done before to confuse them and not, and not have them get a jump on any tendencies. But in effect, it could end up hurting you in this game. Second down and eight from the 22. Once again, Mean, second consecutive handoff, works by defenders and is out to the 28-yard line, picks up six yards. John Burrow got him around the ankle and brought him down for Atlanta. Two runs, and now it's third and short. And let's see what you get out of this. Now, for Atlanta, it's big. This is a big play for him right here. Try to get off the field. Find some way within you to get off the field. This is the last game of the season, guys. You haven't done much all year. Find a way. Means trying to find a way to get off the field. He looked like he was hobbling a little bit. But they'll take him out on this shotgun formation with an empty backfield and third down and two. They've got to get to the 30. They stand at the 28. Brunel. Rush comes on again. He gets by Matthews and he grabs the pass, which is caught by Jimmy Smith. And he's by midfield into Falcon territory at the 43 yard line. He shed the defender, broke free, and gains 27. Third and two, and they say, here it comes. And, and you can't stop it. They put out five receivers in this set. They all go deep. And watch it. Watch Brunel find Smith. I mean, he got, and that's the weakness over there on the corners. Lenny McGill has been out there, and they've had Nate Odoms out there. Darnell Walker, they're on their eighth combination this season, Kevin. They have not been able to settle and find corners this year. And this is not the guy to go against the hot-throwing Mark Brunel, who's got time, and again he throws. This time, McCardle, close to a first down at the Atlanta 35, a gain of nine. Walker was beaten on the corner. I mean, it seems the receivers just come out there, and they get around the cornerback, and then they'll run a circle around him or something and wait for Brunel to find him. Wait for Brunel to say, there's enough room there now, I'll throw the ball. Nice balance running pass today by Jacksonville. But you know what? They've been running over the last three weeks, Bill. They've been running more than they've been throwing the ball as they take a measurement. They're trying to get that. They're trying to get a balanced offense. You talk to Coughlin, and they, they want balance in their offense. And that's what they got Natron Means down here for, and they need him to be productive. Means had the thumb surgery, couldn't hold on to the ball early in the season. The Stewart, who was the number one pick last year, was the guy. But then he injures his toe. Means comes back in. And all he's done over the last couple weeks, 56, 67, and last week, 92 yards. And already today, he has 76, 76 yards on the ground. Yards with a lot of football left to play. And I, I think that exemplifies what, what Coughlin wants. I, he knows that the game is won in the trenches. He knows that you have to win the battle up front with the big guys and get the ball eaten up with your running back. Jacksonville has already held the ball seven more minutes today than Atlanta. Second down and one. Means. And they can't take him down, can they? He's close to a first down. He had to get inside the 24. And if the mark by the referee across the way is any indication, looks like his forward progress took him across for the first down. They'll give it to him. First down, Jaguar. Means a pro bowler in 19... 94 when San Diego went to the Super Bowl gained over a thousand yards but then he got over overweight out of shape and he was injured the following training camp and the holdout the contract he wanted to redo his deal and you know it just turned to sour taste in management's mouth and they ended up getting rid of him first and ten from the 33 means there's a big hole he goes steaming through before he is met by Ron George that's a pickup of eight on first down 
Boy, oh boy. You know, I said, you know, I said the game's won in the trenches. And, and you think about this, and, and, and you look. Watch these guys over here, the left side line. That's Baselli. Look at the down block again by Coleman. I mean, when you shoot those gaps up there, Dan Owens jumped in there. And when, when you're going to shoot those gaps, you're going to create seams. There, there's Burrow getting pushed out again by Baselli, and Dan Owens inside shot the gap. So that, that in itself opened up a big wide hole. Second down, two. Well, they're sticking with me, just kind of what you predicted, a gain of five to the 20-yard line, another Jacksonville first down. You know, it's funny. If you look look at Jacksonville and the way they built their franchise, and, and then you look at, on the other hand, what June Jones and, and Atlanta Falcons, how they built their franchise. I mean, they went out, Jacksonville, and got Pacelli. They got Searcy. They went and got Coleman. They went and got Wydell and, and Rich uh, Tilski and DeMarco. They drafted him. And on the defensive side of the ball, they went out and got all free agent defensive linemen. And, and the Falcons, they went out and spent their money on quarterbacks, on Eric Metcalf, on receivers, and forgot about, hey, the game is won in the trenches. Eighth play of the drive, handoff fake by Brunel, and a wide open tight end is Derek Brown, and it's incomplete. Second down and 10, and he was wide open. Well, they start 15 veteran free agents on the Jaguars, only 12 Jacksonville players, Bill, were drafted. Only 12. Well, you know, the, everybody talks about it. If there ever is another expansion team that comes in, you know, they talk about one in uh, L.A. at some point in time and, and Cleveland getting a team at some point in time, but if there ever, ever is another one, watch. They're going to take all that away from them. I mean, they had an expansion draft made for them. They had all the first-round draft choices last year and this year, and then they got to pick out free agency because that was going on, too. Second out and 10, 13-3. Jacksonville will win today, and they are in the playoffs. Second down pass, caught first down. Jimmy Smith at the 9, gain of 11. First and goal. And Darnell Walker is walking back. He's, he, look, he's frustrated. He's got his head down. I mean, that's a frustrating feeling. When you line up over your guy and he runs a slant on you and you can't stop it. There's absolutely nothing you can do to stop it. And that's a 10 yard gain and first down in one play. I mean, he does what he's supposed to do. He's back off him. He closes on the ball and he wraps up and makes a tackle. But it's a first down and he knows he can't stop it. First down on his fifth catch of the day from the nine means. And he plows down near the six yard line, picking up three. It'll be second down and goal. Lester Ershambo makes the stop. See, that's the thing with Jacksonville when you're playing right now. If you get means going and, and you can't stop them, then you've got to bring a safety up or somebody else, an extra safety, a free safety, strong safety, corner. Somebody has to come up there and be the eighth man in the box. And when you get that, that really kills you because you're already outmanned in the defensive secondary with their receivers. And then when you bring a guy up for support in the run, now you're going to be shorthanded. The catch 22. Second goal from the six. 11th play of the drive. Timeout Jacksonville. Jaguars will have it second down and goal when we come back. They lead Atlanta by 10 in the third. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Sony's PlayStation. We have over 150 games to choose from, so there. By the Braun Flex Integral, designed to perform better. And by the new Coors Light Wide Mouth Can. Tap the Rockies with a smoother pour. Jaguars have it second down and goal. What's going on here? I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Where's he going? He's out for a joy ride, not going anywhere. Now remember, he was injured back in the. He had uh, the contusion on it on his thigh that when he tried to tackle Hayward, and he's pr probably trying to work that thing out, stay loose. 11th play of the drive, second goal from the six. Fake the means, so they were keying on, and here comes Brunel, who sheds the defense and buys some time with the scramble and throws out of the reach of Keenan McCardle in the corner of the end zone. And now it's going to be third down again. Now they're in a situation where they've got to do something here and do something. I mean, put it in the end zone. Well, a couple times before, they've been in the same situation. And, and two of the three previous times, Bill, they've had to settle for two field goals. And that's you don't want that. When you get down inside the red zone, you, you take the field goal if it's your last thing you can possibly do. But this team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, should be able to score touchdowns when they're in there against Atlanta. Third and goal from the six. Just under nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. Brunel. 
He is one and one touchdown today, but this time brought down by Archambeau at the four, and they're going to have to settle once again for three and another win, as you call it, for the Atlanta defense. That is a win. It's a small win, but it is a win. And let me tell you something about Archambeau. He's having a big day. I mean, he's putting some pressure on the quarterback. He's got two sacks, and then he, he stopped the touchdown there. He's got eight tackles today so far. Now, Atlanta's defense has been on the field a lot, but this kid's playing. This is a 22-yard attempt. 22-yard field goal attempt for Mike Hollis, who has already made two in a row from 23 and 26 yards. Barker on the hold. And he bangs that one through. So field goals of 22, 23, and 26 yards. Uh, but Atlanta's defense comes through and stops Jacksonville again from getting in the end zone. Falcons hanging tough. Jacksonville needs a win. It's 16 to 3 Jaguars. These days, it seems like everything is the official something of somebody. What's next? The official soft drink? The team mascot? Look at this guy right here. And this one here. And this girlfriend and this kid. See? See, they're drinking Dr. Pepper just because it tastes great. It's kind of the official soft drink of everyone else. Like this guy with the bratwurst. He executes a one-handed switch. You can't coach this stuff. It's a thing of beauty. Hey, who's doing that? I do that. Hi, got your pizza. I didn't order a pizza. You didn't order a pizzeria stuffed crust pizza? Sure didn't. It's baked fresh every day. Not too thick, not too thin. Just like pizzeria pizza. Mmm, taste the sauce and ring of cheese that's baked into the crust. But uh... Oh, yeah, that's, that's our. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Discover pizzeria stuffed crust pizza. Hi, got your pizza. What pizza? It's an NFC East battle in the nation's capital on Fox NFL Sunday. This is what football is all about. This is what the NFC is all about. The Dallas Cowboys are building momentum into the playoffs, while the Redskins look to avenge a Thanksgiving Day loss. Terry Allen walks in for the touchdown. The Cowboys are ready to make another Super Bowl run, as the Skins will try to end the season with a victory. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. The Cowboys take on the Redskins later today. Get ready for the all-new Bundy Christmas special. Jingle bell, jingle bell. Bless you. Married with children, part of a full hour tonight on Fox. Well, Falcon head coach June Jones, whose offenses have struggled on grass, which they're playing on today. Bill Moss told you yesterday he thinks he will weather the storm in Atlanta. Yeah, he must be the president of the Atlanta Optimist Club. <laughs> because I don't think many people think that he'll be back. So far, he's playing the role of the spoiler pretty good. He is not allowing Jacksonville to tear loose. Well, they're defensively, they're, they're in there. They're doing a good job. Now the offense has to get going. And you talk about on grass in 3-11. This team isn't built to play on grass. They're quick, fast guys. Hollis, the kickoff. Preston on the retrieval from the 10. Bunched up, and he spurts through out to the 27-yard line. Jeff Kopp makes the stop. So Bobby Abair, who's thrown more interceptions than any quarterback in the NFL, now has it on his shoulders to move the team. This NFC-AFC playoff update is brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, and Dallas will play after this game up in Washington. Green Bay leading Minnesota near the half. Carolina losing at Pittsburgh. If Carolina loses today, San Francisco could win the division with the game on Monday night at home against Detroit. Vikings and Eagles are jockeying for the fifth and the sixth slots in the wild card race. They are in, but where they will play and what slot they will take is yet to be determined by the results from today. Abair from the 28th. The crowd now working into a frenzy. They know this is a big defensive stand. First down and 10 yards to go for Abair. And out of the backfield, throws to the rookie running back Richard Huntley, who's up the sideline and has a first down to the 41 as he picks up 14 on first down. A McDonald's game break back to Hollywood and James Brown. Kevin, Brett Favre still on fire, tosses his 37th TD of the season. This one, a screen pass to Dorsey Levens as he finds pay dirt. Hackers up, aiming for a home field advantage. 9-6, Chiefs over the Bills. Can't get much tighter than that. Back to Kevin Harlan and Bill Moss. Speaking of Green Bay, has Levens made that team differently. Jacksonville winning four in a row, coming into today. Three of those four teams will be in the playoffs by sundown. Hayward in the backfield, in for the injured Jamal Anderson, and Hayward builds up ahead of steam. He's into Jacksonville territory. 
picking up 11. There was a loose ball on the play. And one referee blew it dead. The other one said it was a fumble as Aaron Beasley picked it up. And now the discussion on the field because one referee signaled one thing and another guy signaled another thing. Well, they're all huddled up there having a discussion. Looked like Hudson popped it away. Beasley, who is in on a first quarter sack and then thought there was a fumble on that play but was negated, is involved heavily in this play as well. And Dale Hamer will come to us and tell us. It's ruled down by contact. First down. So the first referee call across the way was the right one. They rule it down in an angry Aaron Beasley. I'll tell you, you know, you saw Hayward. He gashed up in the middle, but then I didn't see him arguing in his case. I mean, you don't see a player arguing his case. It's usually a fumble. Now, you can't see from that angle right there. They got some hitting going on out there, too. Don't they? <laughs> They're popping out there. It looked like he was down, though. They're whacking him. It is a first down with the run to the 47 yard line of Jacksonville. Atlanta refuses to die. Number seven to play in the third quarter. Hebert gets a block from Hayward, buys time, and on the run, needs to get to the 37, has the first down, wisely gets out of bounds at the 31. Kevin Hardy on his heels. That's a pickup of 15 by a quarterback. You don't expect to see running the ball like that. Yeah, well, look at Hayward's back of his shirt jersey. It's all grass stained. I mean, that, that tells not only the story today, but the story of Hebert's career. And he's guy, he stands in the pocket, and he'll take a licking. It stands in there. He's had operations, his shoulders, elbows, knees, teeth knocked out. And what a competitor he is. And you just saw it on that play. And this might be his last game. He talked about it, but it's been a rough season. He'll sort it all out after the season. First and 10 for the Jacksonville 32. Ironhead Hayward hit once, popped by Eddie Robinson. And game is about four, working into the teeth of that Jacksonville defense. Mal Anderson still on the sideline. Yeah, he took a he took a shot in his thigh, and he has a thigh contusion too. And the backs are nicked up a little bit. Hunley limped off the field on his first carry. He's out, and so Hayward's actually the only running back. But you know what? You don't have to worry about anything because you can't hurt him. That's the name Ironhead. He's carried the ball eight times for 45 yards today. He gained a thousand yards last year. Anderson gained a thousand yards this year. Got some talent back there. Second down and six. Hebert goes to Mitch Lyons, his 24th catch of the year, and he gains five and close to a first down. For the Jacksonville 23. Robert Massey makes the stop. And that is the deepest penetration which Atlanta has achieved today. Well, this game has caught, I think, a lot of people by surprise. Close as it's been, 16 to 3 Jacksonville. Well, I, you know, it's because Jacksonville really hasn't taken advantage of the opportunities they've had. They've been inside the red zone four times. They, they've only scored one touchdown. They've marched the ball up and down the field, but the reason it's a close game is because they've been limited to field goals. The defense has won. Now it's the Atlanta offense's turn to produce. Third down and one. The best looking drive of the game. And around the blocking of Antone Davis, Hayward picks up three and has a first down to the 20. Kevin Hardy makes the stop. You know, I can remember Craig Hayward when he was up in Chicago. I played a game. I was with the Packers that year, and he was in Chicago, and he was weighing three-something then. Now, remember, he's, he's about 250, 260 now. He's lost nearly 100 pounds. At one time, he was a fullback for the Bears up there. He was around 330 pounds. Right. <laughs> he, he is some load, I'm telling you. 250 coming into today. He's lost 80 pounds. He's been through rehab. He's clean, and he's changed his life around, he says. Seventh play of the drive, first and ten. He gives him a good block there, and he dumps it in the flat where it's caught by Tyrone Brown, and he wiggles his way free to the seven. It's a gain of 14, setting up first and goal to go. I'm telling you, you talk about iron head, and, and watch him use his iron head. <laughs> He's going to block Lagerman and just knock him silly. His helmet pops off. Folks, that's power. Hey, that is power. Can you imagine? I mean, you have the chin strap buttoned tight, and that thing just rides up your face, rips your nose up, and he kicks it. Get that thing out of here and don't bring it back. Gives new meaning to using your head. Whew. That's embarrassing for Logman. First and goal from the seven. 
Best looking drive today by the Falcons. Hayward with the block inside the five and moves a pile to the three. In a four. I'm telling you back on the, the Hayward story. You know what it was? He had a thousand yards last year. He goes to the Pro Bowl. The team was in the playoffs. And he comes back this year and June decides to go with Jamal Anderson, who is a fine running back as well. Younger guy, fresher legs, and he had over a thousand yards. But then Ironhead, I mean, he was running down on kickoff coverages. This is a guy that was in the Pro Bowl one year as a Pro Bowl running back, and next year he's demoted, and so he tried to help out this team any way he can. Now there's an injury, and they're calling on him, and they've marched the ball down the field because of him. And he's finished with second down and goal from the four. Hebert maybe changing the play. Time in the pocket, the throw in the end zone, and almost a juggling catch by Terrence Mathis. It's incomplete in the back of the end zone. Tyrone Brown was back there, too, but Mathis was in the sights of Hebert. It'll be third and goal. Covered by Dana Hall. Third and goal. Mathis has been shut out. They've thrown to him three times, but they have not allowed him to catch a pass, and Mathis is the leading receiver coming into the game. Well, I also think a lot of it has to do with, too, Kev, is that they've run so much today. Right. I mean, they're not distributing the ball around like June Jones' offense normally does. So can Jacksonville's defense do what Atlanta's defense has done all day long? Hold them deep in territory in scoring position. Third and goal from the four. Hebert got a block from Davis and a touchdown pass caught by Eric Metcalf. A four-yard toss. And the Falcons are back in business. And that's what we're talking about. And that is exactly what we've been talking about since early in the second quarter. That they're not, Jacksonville is going to put themselves in a situation by not scoring. And Atlanta has the power, the offensive firepower, to get down there and get in the end zone. And that time they picked on Bucky Brooks. I mean, remember we were talking about the shortage yep. they had at cornerbacks? Well, they caught Bucky Brooks there. It's 16 to 9. Anderson will try the point after. On the hold by punter Dan Straczynski. He is 29 of 29. Now make it 30 of 30 in extra points. So a new game in Florida. Two and a half to play in the third quarter. Jacksonville's lead cut. It's 16 to 10 now for Jaguars. Here today, here tomorrow. The new Galant from Mitsubishi, built for living. been that kind of oh, game oh. Huh? I'll tell you that is some <laughs> kind of hit and he looked like rock'em sock'em robots you know when the head <laughs> pops off and stuff a lot of it comes he doesn't know what to say you know normally if guys be mad he has to say wow <laughs> good hit kind of hit exactly <laughs> and they're working on the helmet which is by the way one of the biggest helmets not Lagerman's but on Hayward's are working on Hayward's helmet as well one of the biggest helmets in the NFL well, Morton Anderson will kick off it's a line drive boot and Bucky Brooks inside his five for Jacksonville. Out to the 26-yard line. So, Bill Moss, the screws have been tightened just a bit. Jaguars need a win to get in the playoffs. Well, today the MetLife blimp is cruising the skies over Jacksonville, Florida, powered by twin engines that are capable of reaching speeds greater than 57 miles per hour. Snoopy One can navigate at altitudes of excess of 6,000 feet. You like them here today with these great scenics high above. Clay Matthews and the Falcons and the Jaguars. Jacksonville has it from their own 26. First down and 10 yards to go. It's on mean shifting gears. He picks up three, make it two and a half, set up second down and long. Well, after this game, which has playoff implications, Dallas already in the playoffs, and winners of the NFC East will be up at RFK Stadium in the final game in that historic building. Cowboys and the Redskins with John and Pat coming up at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific time, right here on Fox. From Jacksonville with Bill Moss, Kevin Harlan. Means in the backfield. Second down, we'll call it seven. Wide open to tight end Brown. His second catch today. Brown breaks the tackle. Picks up the first down, seeking it. He's out to the 39. Jesse Tuggle belts him out of bounds again at 10. Last three drives for Jacksonville. They have eaten up the clock, which Tom Coughlin wanted to do. It's they've run the ball, which he's wanted to do. They've gone 12 plays, 13 plays, 13 plays, but all they've gotten is field goals out of it. 
and now they're getting the ball to Derek Brown. I, I don't agree with the play calling that Jacksonville's doing. Derek Brown has not gotten the ball all year. They only throw it to him a couple times as a bone, as a gift. They need to get the ball to the two guys to score points for him. Well, he did get the first down, and Means takes it up the middle, chugging to the 44, gain of five. Second down and five. So you think they need to go back to the receivers, back to the guys that brought him here, Jimmy Smith, McCardle, Jackson? Exactly. I mean, that's what has gotten them all their success and notoriety. Yes, you'd like to balance out your, your offense. Yes, you'd like to have more runs. But you don't come in in a game like this. Is that crucial to get in the playoffs and decide, okay, I'm going to balance everything up today? You can't get much more balanced than that. 27 on the rush, 27 on the pass. Second down and five. Means with over 100 yards today. And Brunel throws, and there's the tight end again, Derek Brown. They keep throwing those bones, and he keeps chomping on them. He's into Atlanta territory at the 42, a pickup of 14. If you're going to use your tight end, that's where you want to use him. <laughs> right down the you middle. want to use him right down the middle. And, you know, I, I talked about Brunel, and, and I talked about the protection he gets and the guys up front. I mean, look at the job Baselli's doing on Archambault. Archambault has had two sacks already, been pressuring the quarterback, but it's a protection like that. Baselli, with his size and his foot speed, great tackle. Means over 100 yards today for the first time since September of 95. Picks his way for a couple. It'll be second long. You talk about Derek Brown. Three catches today, and that is a career high. Here's Baselli on the pull, but watch Sauer, the, the, the other rookie linebacker for them. He comes up and stops that whole thing. Third quarter has come to a close. 15 minutes will tell us if Jacksonville is in or out of the playoffs, and Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local station. We are back in Jacksonville, and 15 minutes separates Tom Coughlin from the playoffs. If he can hold on, leading 16 to 10, he is in, barring a tie between Buffalo and Kansas City. We begin the fourth quarter here in Jacksonville with Bill Moss, Kevin Harlan, second down and nine. Empty backfield in the shotgun. Five wide receivers at the disposal of Brunel is going to go to his second, maybe even his third option. And look at the time as he throws cross field and it's caught by McCardle. And he gets a first down, picking up 12. He looked like he was frozen there for a second. I thought the play had stopped. <laughs> he completely stopped, like, like there was a dead play. Watch Brunel and the time he has. Now, they try to run some stun up front, but it's just not enough. And then they drop a defensive tackle back into coverage, and there's no pressure there. Look, so watch, see him stop? Nine, and ten, then he sees somebody and, and throws the deep out all the way across the field. 10 to 11 seconds in the pocket to throw. First and 10, seventh play of the drive, means on first 10. To the 26, and a gain of three. Archambault makes the stop, and first time he's been over 100 yards since September of 95. That's saying something, and he's healthy, he's playing well, and his offensive line has given him some room. That's the thing, and that's what I think Coughlin wants to build going into the playoffs, is a, is a run game. He knows how important it is once you get to the next level. Second down and seven. Means. Then Coleman took his guy and just shuffled him out of bounds off to the side, and that was a gain of a couple yards there. So that'll set up third down and about four and a half. There's a player down. Travis Hall. Travis Hall, who's one of the few players in the NFL from Alaska. Well, they like Travis Hall down in Atlanta. He's a good young player, good young talent they have down there. First year as a starter, limited play last year for quarterback and coach June Jones. He was a former quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, Jones was. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Digital Equipment Corporation. Digital, whatever it takes. By Dockers Khakis, hey, nice pants. And by Zantac 75, the final word in heartburn relief. By sea, by land, or by air. We, we've got this game covered today. From the MetLife blimp, a great shot. Not a wonderful day here in Jacksonville. That was a little close, wasn't it? Maybe a little bit. Third down and four. Ninth play of the drive. It's lasted over four minutes, extending from the last part of the third, now to the fourth. Brunel low and incomplete. 
looking for receiver McCardle on the side. Now it's fourth down, Bill. They're going to go for three, and Atlanta's defense holds them out again. They've been able to move the ball from 20 to 20, Kev, and sometimes from 20 to 5. But they haven't been able to get it into the end zone. And, I mean, I, I would think, even if they, whatever happens in this game, I would think that would be frustrating for a coach. I know all coaches talk about in the red zone, the, the scoring percentage. They want to score touchdowns in there. Well, three consecutive field goals by Hollis. This will be his longest attempt today from 42 yards away. The snap may not have been down, and he hits the uprights, and ricochets in for three. How about that? <laughs> Everything that can go right has gone right for Jacksonville, and everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for June Jones in Atlanta. But it's good, and it's 19 to 10, the Jaguars. Don't forget that Atlanta can, can score touchdowns. We saw them do it once. Hollis got a little Christmas gift there. He hooks it, but it goes in. It looks like the Grinch just stopped on the parade for the Falcons. Hollis has just kicked his fourth field goal of the day and his kickoff, Roel Preston slipping at the one, and here he goes for the Atlanta Falcons, looking for something to break, but it won't be Preston. He's out to the 23-yard line, where Bobby Hebert will get it first down and 10 yards to go. And sometimes if you're a team looking at the playoffs in just your second year, Billy, you need just a little, just a little bit of luck. Yeah, well, I think as this game progresses, this, this field goal here is going to come down to a really play in there. I mean, that, that, that three points, it's, it's going to be uh, critical here towards the end of the game. A little bank shot going in. I think he planned that. It'll make it make it interesting, 61. right? 61. 61. Robbie Tobeck, Dale Hamer tells us, is eligible, and he is in the game from their own 23 Atlanta. Bobby Hebert, who has not been nearly as wild as he was last week, and he threw six interceptions. Jamal Anderson is in the backfield. Anderson gets the call. Bad thigh and all, and he moves a pile past the 25, out to the 28. Eddie Robinson stops him after a gain of five. It'll be second down and five. I tell you, they've had the tight end in there the whole game. The Atlanta Falcons. It's bothering you, isn't it? I don't, I don't understand it. You know, and, and they're in a situation here to pull within two if they score a touchdown. And all their success and all their numbers and everything has come from the four wide receiver set. Now we have pro formation, two tight ends. Second along four, Emmanuel on the move. Anderson gets the call, a back from Emmanuel, and he gets a first down as he shoulders his way to the 35, a gain of six. Well, that time they had Mitch Lyons at one tight end, and over here, that's the regular starting guard, Robbie Topek. He's at tight end. Now watch him tighten this all down on a reach block. He gets out on the linebacker, McManus, and... He did tighten it down. That's a good word to use. Watch him turn the corner. He keeps McManus, everything inside, just holds up that whole wall and makes a little alley there. It is a first down. Anderson on the move. Hayward gets the call, and he takes it by the 40 to the 42. And on first down, he picks up about six to five yards on the play. And, of course, all people in Jacksonville watching these two games, Buffalo and Kansas City, cannot end in a tie. And if they don't, Jacksonville wins. They are in. So destiny is in their own hands. Now, where they will play depends on that Cincinnati and, and Indianapolis game. Who wins that game? Whether they'll go to Pittsburgh or whether they'll go to the winner of Buffalo, Kansas City. So a lot of things in play here in the last weekend. Second down and four, and everybody's moving, in particular, Clyde Simmons on the wing, but was he induced? Well, that was Jamal Anderson out there. He's back in the game. Number 32 in the offense. Five yards. Still second down. That is only the second penalty of the game. Jacksonville so far with the big zero. They have not been tossed yellow once. Look at that. 20 rushes. I don't, I don't believe what I'm seeing. No, I, I don't believe it either. I mean, that takes you back to the days of maybe uh, Williams, Andrew 
Yeah, Williams, William, and, William Andrews. And, yeah. and uh, Riggs, they had running back down there. Gerald Riggs, Dave Hampton. Second down and nine, down to 36. He's changing the play. Just got it off in time, and he throws, and it's caught. Tyrone Brown. And he picks up about six yards. McDonald's game break. Back to Hollywood. Here's James Brown. Kevin, safe to say, Green Bay will have home field throughout the playoffs. Why? Take a look at Brett Favre. Tosses his 39th touchdown of the season. NFC record, third highest all time. And guess what? Bills leading the Chiefs 13-9. Bills have the ball under eight to play. Back to Kevin and Bill. Green Bay wins their home throughout the playoff. If Jacksonville wins, they are in. But three of those teams will be in the playoffs. The other one left out. Third and three. Big defensive play here. Hayward. And he may have gotten the first down as he took Travis Davis across the 45 to the 46. And indeed, does get the first down yardage. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm very surprised at two things. First of all, the running game for the Falcons is really shocking. They come out, they've had two back sets, they've had two tight end sets. Why not do this all year? Yeah, to, I don't know why the last game of the season. But I'll tell you, the other thing that's stunning is they haven't had many penalties. Now, they've changed their offense to a new type of offense for them, and you're normally with that comes mistakes. Hardly any today. Fake to Hayward, the throw on the flat. Here's the running shooter. It's fast, and Bert Emanuel finds the crease. He's into Jacksonville territory to the 37-yard line. Clyde Simmons got him from the line. That's a pickup of 17, and this is when the run and shoot works beautifully. Yeah, boy, that's a tough play to stop, too. Because Bear comes out from under center and fakes like a pump fake to one side, then comes back and throws to Preston over here, allowing his lineman to get out in front of him. See Fortin out there and Anton Davis. And that's a tough play to stop when you when you have that distance and then you get the lineman out there for the corners to come up and safeties to come up to stop that thing. Anderson in the backfield. First and ten. Abair got a block from Anderson. Throws to Brown. And then he drops the ball. Second and ten. This is kind of like Atlanta's playoff, isn't it? Well, uh, or a Christmas party. <laughs> I mean, you want to watch simple. out what you do at those Christmas parties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing about it is, is these guys know that they've had a terrible season, and they know what they're thought of around the league as, because they were a playoff team last year, and they scoffed at other teams that had this problem. So they know that everybody thinks they stink. These guys have something to prove because they've got to play somewhere next year. Second and ten. Well, someone will watch this film. There's no doubt about that. Whether it's the new coach or these guys planning next year, Jamal Anderson. 35 picks up two. I mean, it, when I used to in Kansas City, we had some lean years, as I like to call them. And, and a and, lot of coaches. Yeah, and we had some games like this. It meant nothing. It, it meant absolutely nothing for you. And you go out and play the last game, and heck, if you have any pride at all, it's Christmas time. I mean, this is your job. It's the last time you're going to be able to do your job until next year. I go out there and lay it on the line. I mean, it, it, I didn't care. Go get injured. You have all offseason to heal up. But lay it on the line and show some pride. Third down and eight. Lagerman may have jumped. Flag has been thrown. A bear climbs inside and throws the pass. What a catch! Made at the 22 by Bert Emanuel. Good for 13. And if he was not induced, it's a first down for the Falcons. Of course, that pens uh, pending the yellow, and it is against Jacksonville. First penalty today on Jacksonville. Offside, Offside. Defense. defense, number 56, penalty declined, the pass was complete, first down. Lagerman, what a catch. Well, you know, look, watch Hebert stay in there. I mean, he knows it's offsides, but he stays with it and keeps working. And five Burr Emanuel, what a great leap and one-handed grab. That's concentration. And that's pride, what I was just talking about. 10th play of the drive, first and 10, 22 yard line of Jacksonville. Abel wide open his receiver. Down he goes after the catch, Tyrone Brown. He picks up eight, second and short coming up. And so that ground game has really accented the receiving. Now it looks like it's setting everything up. Well, you know what Ironhead can do to you, and you get down here in the red zone for them. 
And now you're really thinking, boy, you know, they, they've killed us with Ironhead. They've been able to pound us. But then what about these other receivers? So now they're really in a predicament when before all you really had to worry about was them throwing the ball. I told you the first half. That's why they were doing it. They, they're beating. Atlanta has held the ball almost six minutes. Second down and two. Hebert faced the rush. Hits Emmanuel. He's got some blocking. He's an open field. And Emmanuel down to the five. Where he picks up the first down. It's a gain of ten. First and goal to go. The Atlanta Falcons. Well, Jacksonville came at him that time with a blitz, but it was just that same screenplay we've seen before. A Bear looks one way, turns around back door, and throws it back door. Now you see the big little hitch in that whole thing is A Bear starting to one side as if it's a rollout, and he gets the defensive lineman going to one side. I think Yurkovic, or is it Calvin Pritchett? Calvin Pritchett is down on the uh, five-yard line. So we have an injury timeout. Atlanta on the move, trailing by nine, fourth quarter. Jacksonville Municipal Stadium filled to capacity. They need defense now more than ever because Atlanta is on the five. They trail by nine. The Falcons down 19 to 10. If Jacksonville wins this game, they are in, barring a tie in Buffalo between the Chiefs and the Bills. So right on the edge, in the fourth, six minutes and 21 seconds away from what would be a playoff berth. It is a little bit tenuous right now. Well, they're six yards away from having a real heck of a close ball game. They need to stop Atlanta from getting in the end zone. Hayward in the backfield. He's rushed for a season high. He's 61 yards. Six plus minute drive. They bear changing the play. Did they jump or were they induced? Is Gene Williams is the right guard. I, I thought Don Davy rolled into that neutral zone. Brand the snap. We have a neutral zone infraction. Offside on the defense. Half a first And that is the first Jacksonville penalty today. Watch number 92. He's right up here. I think he rolled. See, Don Davies rolled forward, and then Gene Williams stepped up. And a new rule is that now is legal for the offense. If you are induced like that by the defense, because a lot of defensive guys will do that. Got to jump and get that offense to move. First and goal from the two. 12th play of the drive. Hayward easily in, slicing his way for the Atlanta touchdown. And with 5.39 left in the fourth quarter, 19 to 16, Jacksonville. Boy, what, that was great job blocking up front. Roman Fortin, Mike Zamdowski, right up the middle. Those guys just pushed that hole and opened it up. And that's all you need is a little bit of movement up front when you have Hayward in there. Well, the defense has done the job. Bobby Abear did the job on that drive. Yeah, they've done the job because every time they've gotten in there, three times been in the red zone, two times touchdown. Anderson good on the point after. 5-39 left in the fourth quarter. 19-17, the Jaguars. As Ironhead Hayward rolls in from two yards away in a new game in North Florida. Watch Roman Fort in the center here. He gets a block on Yurkovic, then comes up on the linebacker. That's Eddie Robinson. See the double block? Gets a piece there. I mean, just tied perfectly. Roman Fortin's done a great job for this unit. He's like the coach. He runs that whole offensive line all week long in practice. I mean, he's just a smart guy, makes all the calls. He's in charge out there. Nice block on that touchdown. And Bear designed a very good looking drive. Five of six throwing through the air on that drive. Kickoff by Anderson is short, picked up by Ricky Bell, who has his bell rung at the last second. Coming down quickly was special teams performer Craig Sauer. Now, the length of Morton Anderson's kickoffs have been usually very deep inside the five yard line. He leads the league, in fact, in that category. Why are they going short here? I don't think he meant to go short there, Kev. I think he wanted to get all of it. The X-Files tonight. Call 
calling it a miracle that could bring peace to a planet or unleash hell upon Earth. Judgment Day is here. Don't miss the X-Files tonight at 9, 8 central on the Fox Television Network. On their own 25, first and 10, Brunel. On the money, then dropped by Jimmy Smith. Incomplete, second out and 10. You know, and look what they did, Kev. Now they're coming out and they're going down the field. They're throwing the deep stuff, the 12-yard route. And with 525 left in the game, I don't know if that's enough time for them because they obviously they've seen now. They know their mistake. They know that they, hey, we've got to score points. And the way we've done scored points in the past has been getting the ball downfield. Second down and 10 from the 25. Five and a half to play in the fourth. Means wrapped up nicely. Dan Owens on the end got a hold of it. And that goes for a minimal game. Third and long. Five minutes left to go, Kev. Jacksonville's got the ball third and ten. Big play right here. Atlanta gets the ball back and goes down, and they've been able to score. We've seen them. They put it in the end zone. If not, they've been able to move the ball on them and get in field goal range. Big play here for Atlanta Falcons. Third down and eight. Everything is set right now. Buffalo beating Kansas City. They've got the lead right now. Holding onto the ball. Paramount and a first down, a must for Jacksonville. Good time now it collapses for now being chased by Clay Matthews. And by some friends and Matthews brings him down. Clay Matthews who is playing in perhaps his last game after 19 years in the NFL. And that play exemplifies Clay Matthews. Here's Clay Matthews right here on Baselli. Outmatched and watch him just keep fighting. He gets outside he's chasing he's hustling he never quits. He, he has never quit, and he keeps going after he finally comes down. He hasn't quit in 19 years, and he's still going. He says he's not Hollywood, but he was on the main screen there with a big play that now will give Atlanta the ball back on the punt by Barker, which is a wobbly short punt and picked up by Eric Metcalf, and he's down at the 30-yard line. Luckily, he got the nice bounce. Well, at age 40, that was his sixth sack of the year. He leads the Falcons in that category. What a way to go out. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Back in Jacksonville, and all eyes now focus on a guy that has as many game-winning kicks as anybody in the NFL, Morton Anderson. It is from their own 30-yard line, first down and 10. Hayward and Anderson in the out. They talk about a low. And Anderson with the block from Hayward. Running to the side, getting close to the sideline. Was he knocked out of bounds? They blow it dead. And about the 32 will give him two yards on the carry, setting up second down and eight. We just see Morton Anderson. Where does he have to get that ball put down to kick the possible go-ahead touch uh, field goal? Well, they've got to go about 40 yards. You see, they need to go right to about there. That's about the 30-yard line. And you figure with a seven-yard snap, and you're looking at around 46, 47-yard field goal. And that's very makeable for Morton Anderson. And it doesn't matter at the end of the game. Morton's used to that. 23 game-winning kicks for Anderson over his career. Second down and nine. Hayburn, second option, got his receiver, Tyrone Brown, gain a five to the 35. It'll be third down and five. Now watch what Bobby Hebert sees. Bobby Hebert is all set to dump this off to Jamal Anderson in the backfield. But when he sees the matchup that they've been waiting for, and that's Mathis on Eddie Robinson, the linebacker, he's ready to dump it over here. See him look, but then he says, hey, Brown's over there on the linebacker. I'll take that instead. You want to wide receiver on a linebacker. Falcons have missed their last three, make it five. Third down conversions. Third and five. They got the first down here. Jamal Anderson spinning off the tacklers to the 49-yard line. So they get their first third down conversion over the last six attempts. Well, when you saw the missed tackles there, Kev, they had an opportunity to tackle Jamal Anderson, and tackling was been a problem for this team. Dick Duran, the defense coordinator, talked about it. Tom Coughlin talked about it. He said last week we tackled terrible when they faced Chris Warren and the Seahawks. First down and 10. Anderson. 
into Jacksonville territory. Picks up three to the 48. Kelvin Pritchett closed the door. I'll tell you something, Kev. Man. No matter what happens here, you, you have going down to two-minute warning, and, and no matter what happens, if they go down and kick the game-winning field goal or whatever, I mean, you really have to credit the Falcons for coming here and showing up. Jacksonville has every reason to win this game, and Atlanta is fighting. They're out there scratching, clawing, whatever it takes. Maybe fighting for the coach. Second down and seven. A bear to Brown. He got a block, and there he goes. And Brown is on the move inside the 30 and to the Jacksonville 26. Tony Brackens made the stop a gain of 22 yards. And there's that play. There's that screen play that we've seen been so successful for him the whole game. A bear takes off one way, turns around, throws the other. Now watch the block out there by the lineman. Those guys have done a great job getting out there in front of the screen all day long. And they're in Morton Anderson field goal range at the two-minute warning. Jacksonville needed two things to happen today. First of all, Kansas City Buffalo not ended a tie. And as you can see, it's 29 with Buffalo on top. And they had to win against the 3-12 and 12 Atlanta Falcons. Looked like a pushover game. But it's been anything but. And now if they can hold on, they'll be in good shape. But with 152 remaining. Atlanta's got it at the 25. Well within Morton Anderson field goal range. First down and 10. Hayward. Got by the outside linebacker Tom McManus and finally brought down by Mickey Washington. Picks up six. It'll be second down. And for Bill, you go six months, 15 games. Now inside two minutes. And it's unraveling before their eyes. 141 to play. It's an NFC East battle in the nation's capital on Fox NFL Sunday. The Dallas Cowboys are building momentum into the playoffs while the Redskins look to avenge a Thanksgiving Day loss. Terry Allen walks in for the touchdown. The Cowboys are ready to make another Super Bowl run as the Skins will try to end the season with a victory. It's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. The Cowboys take on the Redskins next. The equation's pretty simple. The defense has got a hold. They have to. I'll tell you, in the last play, they ran a blitz. I mean, they know they're in a des de desperate situation there. Look at that out. Dick Durant came with a the blitz. They've got to create something. Fly around in there, cause a turnover. Still plenty of time. Find a way to get it done. They need to cause a turnover in a game without any turnover so far. Seventh play of the drive. Jacksonville had a 16-3 lead in the third quarter. Now 1917 Jaguars. Second and four. Hayward wrapped up by the veteran Jeff Lagerman. Came and plugged the middle, a gain of one. Another timeout. Jacksonville is out of timeouts, holding on to a two point lead. People love champions. You got the two best teams. They worked all year long to get to this moment. People love great events. Winning a Super Bowl is it. As a player, as a coach, the Super Bowl, the spectacle. An incredible moment. It's astounding what it's become. Super Bowl 31. It's just something about somebody being the best. Fox Super Sunday, January 26th. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern when John Madden reveals his all-time Super Bowl team. Atlanta took over on their own 30 with 3.57 left to play. Now they've got 136 left, and they've set things up nicely for Morton Anderson. Beautifully getting this ball downfield, and I'll tell you, Atlanta's done a fine job today offensively of creating different scenarios for themselves, Kevin, with different personnel. Right, right. Just watching them run the ball, two back sets, and they've been able to move the ball downfield effectively today. And you know, Jacksonville, it's their fault for letting them hang around. I mean, they didn't take advantage of the opportunities they had. They let Atlanta hang around. And if you let a team like Atlanta hang around, they're capable of scoring at any time. They're down in five from the 20. Eighth play of the drive. Jamal Anderson, first down to the 12. A gain of eight. And when the defense of Jacksonville was called to hold, they could not. 
And Atlanta is rolling with 125 in the clock ticking. Well, you know, there's always questions surrounding a 35-yard field goal, which that would have been. Now it's down there. They're in the range right now where it's going to be a chip shot. Jacksonville out of timeouts. Atlanta has all three of their timeouts remaining. Well, they're inside 50 yards where Morton Anderson is perfect. He is at 18 consecutive field goals inside 50. Hayward in the backfield. First and 10. Ironhead gets it. Stood up and brought down by Davis. A gain of one. Second down and nine. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to hand it to Ironhead. They're going to take him, give him the next shot, and just let him line up, tell him to center it in the center of the field. They were got drilled on this play. They're flying around. They're trying to make something happen, but a little too late. Atlanta working that play clock, which is down to 13 right now. Eating up as much time as possible. And, you know, 17 points isn't a lot of points given up. I mean, Jacksonville today defensively, I mean, they've done a good job. They, they've held them. You try to hold a team to under, to under 20 points defensively. That's what you try to do. But offensively, they've had the opportunities. They have not been able to capitalize on them. Stunned silence inside this capacity-filled stadium today. The game is presented by authority of the NFL, intended for the private use of our audience. And a rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the NFL is prohibited. Did you ever predict this kind of game? Did you ever see this coming? Well, I, I think we talked about it earlier, and I think one of the problems is is the coaching staff looked ahead. And you don't never like to say that, and nobody likes to say it, but I think they did, and I'll tell you why. It's because I touched on it earlier. They went out, and they, you saw all these things that Jacksonville normally doesn't do. They don't give the ball to the fullback. They don't throw the ball to the tight end. They try to do all these things so that the playoff team scouting them can look at their tendencies and say, wow, they really don't have any tendencies. Because they run out this computer sheet about uh, three inches thick, and they look at all the tendencies. And they tried to play with them a little bit here today instead of taking care of the business at hand, and that is putting... Atlanta away and they had a lot of opportunities to do it 11 seconds to play Morton Anderson is on the field and now he's on the sideline he was back out there practicing and getting a feel for what he might have and now he is back on the sideline second down and nine from inside the 12 and a bear just falls Center. down just gets it in the middle of the field so it's a poor position shot down the middle. That's Fourth right position. Another timeout taken by Atlanta. They are down to one. Eight seconds left. To have it this close, Bill, to be within range against what appears to be a beatable opponent. After all those months of practice and training camp and games and travel and film and meetings, it may be all gone in eight seconds. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's tough. And, and if you look around the stadium, how quiet it is, and everybody's on their feet, and they're in disbelief. They can't believe what has happened. I don't think the players realized what was happening, even with five minutes to go in the game. I don't think they saw the big picture, and I think the, the coaching staff was looking ahead into the playoffs, thinking this was a give-me. And, you know, with a young team, you, you learn a valuable lesson here today, and you realize that it doesn't matter in the NFL. 31-yard field goal attempt for the lead. And it's no good. Christmas has come early to Jacksonville.
They're in, Kev. Plain and simply, they're in. Good snap, good hold, and what you want to watch is that field. His right foot, he slipped. We talked about the slippery field out there. His plant foot, as he approached the ball, he slipped. And Morton Anderson, who has had 23 game-winning kicks, one of the all-time kickers. Watch his plant foot. See his plant foot? He just he rolled over, and that's that turf out there. He's bound for Canton, Ohio, in the Hall of Fame, but he probably has never felt any lower than he feels right now. He had made 59 consecutive field goals from 30 yards and in. And this Jacksonville team stared death right in the eye. And they've come out a winner. And the Jaguars are going to the playoffs. An incredible ending. 1917 Jacksonville playoff bound under second year coach Tom Coughlin.